Hi everybody, today I'm going over how I wired up these Hella 500 lights to the front of the Volvo. The kit comes with two lights and all the wiring and switches and everything you need to wire it up. So it's really a great kit if that's the route you're going. I decided to do three lights though, so some of the wiring has to be beefed up and I decided to use an OEM switch instead of the switch that comes with this because there's some blank slots in the dash and I wanted a really clean install. So if you're doing two lights but want to do a cleaner install and stuff, definitely check out the video. If you're doing three or four lights, this video will be great. It shows you why you need to beef up the wiring and things like that. So check the video out. Let me know what you guys think. And as always, thanks for watching. Your specific tools may vary, but here's what I use to get this job done. Your load of choice, in this case a Hella 500. My kit came with a wiring harness, though I will be altering parts of it, so I do have extra wire. My kit also came with a switch, but I'm actually going to be using the OEM switch that I sourced from eBay. Some heat shrink tubing, a heat gun or lighter, wire strippers, I recommend wire loom. If you are rewiring a lot like I am, various electrical supplies like wires and terminals don't hurt either. This plugs into your relay and has four wires coming off of it. Yellow wire is your trigger wire. That doesn't need to be touched. The blue wire is your ground, which also doesn't need to be upgraded. The red wire comes from your battery, supplying the power. The black wire takes that power to your lights. Both of these wires are too small a gauge to carry the amount of amps needed for a three or four lamp setup. Now you can start taking apart the wiring harness. This is better done with some terminal removal tools, but in this case, with this harness, if you have a small screwdriver, it works just fine. That's what I used and I didn't have any issues. There's a little tab on the terminal that holds it to the plug and what you're trying to do is depress that tab. So in the case of this first one, I went from the opposite side and pressed the whole piece in to get, be able to pull it out. And then in this second one, I actually depressed the tab itself from the other end and was able to pull the wire out. So. I mean, same type of terminal, different style plug, so just find out what works best for you, but on all terminals, there is a little tab that you have to depress because it's hooked to the plug that way. Otherwise, you're going to break the terminal or the plug itself. This next part is me taking apart the terminals so I can reuse them. I highly suggest you buy new terminals, but to be completely honest, I did this during the height of the COVID outbreak in my area, and I didn't want to go driving around into different stores looking for the correct replacement terminals. So I decided to reuse them and film it for you guys. It's really not that difficult to reuse them, it's more of just kind of a pain. You have to open them up and make sure you don't break the little tabs, and these are pretty cheap terminals so the metal's really soft. So, you can see I did it, uh, I reused all the terminals, but again, highly suggest you just go out and buy new ones. It'll be way easier. Here's the lamp itself, and the black wire coming out of it will need to be beefed up if you're doing the three or four light setup. The blue wire again is the ground, and no need to touch that one. I'm not going to bore you guys with the rest of this process, it's not why I made the video, so if you have any questions about removing terminals and crimping wires, please leave it in the comments and I can help you out. Otherwise, back to how I actually installed this setup. This fuse green wire is the 12 volt source for your switch. It can be a keyed or constant power source, whichever your preference. Definitely try and pull your power source as close to where the switch will be mounted as possible. Since mine is going on the left side of the steering wheel in that switch bank, I would pull from under the dash, but the previous owners installed the remote start system, so I don't really know what's going on under there. Because of this, I'm going to be pulling the 12 volt source from the radio. I wired in a Grom unit, so I know that the power source is the green wire with the brown stripe on it. The previous owners also had satellite radio, and that's where I tied in the Grom unit to, so I have this little snap connector left over from when I bought the Grom unit, so I just decided to use that for the fog lights. Whatever method you use to tie into the 12 volt source, it doesn't matter, just do whatever you're comfortable with, or whatever's easiest. These are really simple to use, you just slip your existing wire through one slot, your new wire through another slot, and then crimp it all together. I've had no problem with it, uh, got a couple hundred miles on the car since the install, so it hasn't rattled itself loose or anything. Once you're happy with the connection, stuff all the wiring into the dash and route it over to where your switch is going to be mounted. Using a small screwdriver or pick tool, it's real easy to pop the switch blank out, and once you're done with that, just feed the wire up through and we'll get on to doing things inside the engine bay. My original idea was to use a fuse tap in block 25 under the hood here, but you can't fit a fuse tap in here and put the lid on, so I'm just going to be getting power from the battery itself. Because of that, I found the most convenient place to mount the relay was right behind the hood latch on this little post by the battery. Wherever you choose to mount your relay and your switch, just make sure that you have enough yellow wire to make it through the firewall and connect the two together. I was able to find this hole in the firewall. You can see the coat hanger on the right of the screen there. It's right above the brake pedal and right by where the steering column goes down into the floor. It's real easy to find from inside the car. When you feed the wire through the firewall from the inside, this is where it pops out. It's a little hard to capture it on camera, but I didn't move it to get here, it just worked its way right up there. The method that's always worked best for me is to take some electrical tape and attach the wire to the hanger itself, and then just carefully pull the whole assembly through. Make sure you leave enough slack around the wiring, you don't want it like tight and binding up anywhere, but at the same time if you have excessive slack, 
go ahead and pull that on through to the interior and then cut it to length depending on where you mount your switch. There's a bolt right above the hood latch release behind a small plastic cover and that's what I'm using to ground the switch. Here's the back of the fog light switch and the way the terminals are numbered are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 is blank. There are numbers next to the terminals but they're a little hard to read on camera. So the way it gets wired up is 3 is your signal, 5 is your ground, 4 is your power. So if you're using the hello wiring it would be yellow, blue, green. The wiring kit includes terminals to use with the generic switch that Hello supplies, but these coincidentally fit the Volvo switch as well, so you can just go ahead and use these no matter which switch you're wiring up. Regardless of the switch you decide to use, it's still the same procedure of stripping the wires and crimping the terminals on, which is what you see me doing here. There is one thing to be aware of if you're using the Volvo switch. Because you typically have the plug on the backside that the wires are feeding into and not wiring directly to the posts on the switch, the terminals are kind of close together, and I think vertically they may touch. So I'm actually heat shrinking right down to the end of the terminal. That way there's no contact between the different wires. If you're using the generic switch that comes with the Hello wiring kit, that's not an issue. As you can see, the terminals slide on nicely and everything fits great. One thing to note is don't follow my wiring in this part of the video. Follow it from what I previously stated about where things are connected. For whatever reason, the wiring diagram I looked up wasn't right for what I wired up in this portion of the video. Took a little bit of trial and error of me just swapping plugs out and seeing how the other switches were wired to figure out the correct way of doing it, which is what I previously stated before I started doing this. So just refer back to that if you have any questions about which wires go to which studs on the plug. With the relay roughly in place, I ran the black power wire behind the headlamp, in front of the radiator support, down behind the front bumper, and then through the lower grill. Obviously with the wire running through the lower grill like this, you can't remove the grill without removing the wiring. I personally don't have an issue with that because the amount of times I'm going to have to remove that lower grill is very slim, and if I do, then I can just unplug the relay and fish the wiring out that way. Next up is the red wire, which is going straight to my battery. The fuse that Hello supplies for the power wire is 15 amps, and 3 lights equals roughly 13.75 amps, or 14 amps if you want to round up, so the 15 amp fuse will be totally fine for a 2 or 3 lamp setup. If you're doing 4, you'll probably need to upgrade the fuse. With the lights mounted, now I can connect all the wiring. I'm going to be running the ground wire back to the negative post on the battery terminal for both the lights and the relay. I couldn't find a suitable ground otherwise. The front bumper wasn't a good ground and anywhere else along the front just didn't provide a good ground when I measured it. So if you guys know a better ground, go ahead and use it and actually comment and let me know. But otherwise, just run everything back to the negative battery terminal. At this point, just connect all the wires together. Blue goes to blue, black goes to black. With this wiring being exposed on the front of the vehicle, I wanted it to be as sealed as possible, so I used the heat shrink style butt connectors along with the adhesive style heat shrink tubing over top of that. I haven't taken the car through a winter yet with this setup, but I have gone through some rainstorms and I've washed the car a few times since I installed the fog lights, and I haven't had any problems with the wiring. So if you do have any questions about the longevity of it, just leave a comment and I'll let you know how it's doing at the time. Once I finished, I realized that I was unhappy with some of the routing, like some of the wires crossed over each other in a way that I didn't really like. I don't think it ruined the setup and I think it still looks really clean and I'm really happy with it, but just be aware of which wires are crossing what, how they're being fed, and so when you connect it all, you're happy with how it's run. I used a wire loom on the front end here just to clean up the wiring a little bit and then I was able to zip tie it up around the bracket and you can't see the zip ties behind the fog lamp and it looks really clean. With all the wiring buttoned up, that's the end of your install. You should be able to reconnect your negative battery terminal and turn your lights on. Here's the final setup of the interior, with the rear fogs, front fogs, and the final switch being the auxiliary lights. I wanted to keep this video about the wiring of the lights and not really the mounting of the lights because there's so many different options. If you do have any questions about the mounting of the lights, please check out my other video where I quickly go over that. Well, if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching the whole thing. I hope this helped you install some auxiliary lights on your Volvo or other car. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe.